Welcome everybody. It's uh, top of the hour. We got uh, 1202, so out here in uh, Colorado where I'm at. And then we have, uh, I guess, uh, depending on where you are, it's either afternoon or morning. And my name is uh, Chris Ekstrom. I'll be working with you guys today. Online with me, I got uh, Mark uh, Wolf and also Michael Bazzoni. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started without further ado on this. Go through this really quick. Uh, today is a virtual Thursday. Um, today we're going to be covering wildland experience and task books and how to document that in an electronic format using emergency reporting. Um, talked about our presenters, myself, Chris Ekstrom, and then Mark Wolf and Michael Bozzoni with us. Some training opportunities that, ver or that uh, emergency reporting offers. We have the virtual Thursdays like you're at today. First and third Thursdays, uh, 1100 Pacific. And, you know, you guys can join on just like you're doing today. Register, do that. That's all free. They're pre-recorded and you can see those later as well. Um, online, I'm sorry, not pre-recorded. They're done live, but they are recorded and posted onto the website. Also, we have online training, three hour blocks, and then those topics and materials are suited and developed to meet your department specific needs. And if you had any questions about that, you would contact uh, training um, or Nicole, our training coordinator, and she can get you set up on there. We also have on site training where we come out and do training with your department, again, customizing that training to meet your department's needs. And we also have regional and national training academies. And there's one going on right now in Philadelphia. Not sure if anybody out there from Philadelphia at the uh, RTA is with us, but a uh, big shout out to them if they're on there. Um, Mark Wolf, or I'm sorry, <laughs> um, Nicole, our training coordinator is out there along with uh, um, Mac, our training supervisor. These regional training academies we were just talking about, the next one, May 15th through 17th in Seattle, Washington. And then we have another one, June 19th through 24th, 21st in Charlotte, North Carolina. So <clears throat> where are we going to go from here? I'm going to go ahead and switch over real quick and I'm going to start the presentation on here. Clear out of some of that stuff. Okay, when you first log into emergency reporting, you're going to have this home screen and we're going to go ahead and jump right into the training module and what's going on with that. So the first thing that I want to show everybody here is how to document training and things like your uh, your refresher it's uh, march over here in uh, colorado we're starting to really vamp up and get ready for our wildland season um, starting to get hot and dry We've got multiple red flag days out there getting everybody squared away to where they're trained up and getting ready for the uh, future wildland season so with that one i was also going to launch a poll real quick and ask everybody where are they or I'm sorry, ask everybody, do you utilize the NWCG guidelines as a best practice? Do you follow that as the RT-130 training and things like that? So we're going to go ahead and uh, launch that poll and see if we can get that going. So oh, never mind. I guess we're having some technical difficulties on that. We don't have the poll going. So um, we'll just go ahead and forego that portion and uh, just get moving forward. So if you're utilizing the NWCG guidelines. Hey, Chris, um, let me interrupt kind of you. I, Chris, I just got that poll to, to go off for you. Awesome. Thank so you. And we got about half of everybody that's voted. Looks like most everybody here does. All right. Looks like about three quarter of us have done it. We'll give it off in about four seconds. Three, two, one. All right. Awesome. So we've collected that response. Awesome. So it looks like we got about 74% of the of you guys utilize NWCG guidelines and 26% of you do not. So thank you very much for that uh, for that response on there. So for those of you that do not utilize it, you can still use this. This will still help you. Just understand that, you know, you're going to have some of your department's uh, specific guidelines based in here. So we're just giving you a, a place to start and maybe a best practices solution. So as we're going through, I'm going to start you with the JPR component and how to document that refresher training. So that RT-130 refresher training that you're doing. 
the first thing that you're going to want to make sure that you have set up is a really quick briefing on this. Make sure you have some training templates built within the system. So you can see over here, I have some templates that are built in the system. I also have a couple of uh, classes up here. I have a template for NWCG pack test. So that's our arduous physical agilities test that we're going to have to do every time as we do our uh, refresher. We have a template for what my department utilizes for that driver, operator, and pumper. So if you're going to go out on a type six engine, type three engine, something like that, we want to make sure that those guys know how to drive the vehicle, go through a closed range exercise, and also how to operate the pump. And then the other portion on here, we have the classroom, the RT-130 we've been talking about so much this morning. Um, that wildland refresher class lesson. Those are all going to need to be built out as templates. If you don't know how to build templates, you can go ahead and uh, look onto some of our previous virtual Thursdays and also some of the knowledge base articles. If you have questions about that, go ahead and shoot a question over to uh, training at emergencyreporting.com and we can get you squared away if you guys have trouble doing that. So as we're building those templates, now those are built, um, I can start assigning and getting those classes done. So utilizing the JPR function, what I've done is built this JPR function to track that red card certification. And the way to do that, real quick overview, give it a name, the start date, the end date, a description, and then you're gonna need to build those class temp or put those class templates in that have already been built into that class. What this is gonna mean is that to do this, I'm gonna say I want them to complete task one, which is the pack test, test. I want them to complete this other template, which is the wildland driver operator stuff we talked about. And then we also have the refresher classroom lesson. Once I put all those in there, I click add and it'll load up just like that. And then I'm going to assign whatever agency personnel are required to do that. So on my agency, that's going to be every person on the line. Um, and I put those on. You can see I've already loaded some of these into this demo account. So the way that looks now, if I hover over top, I can see everything that's required for that class. So this is the first part of the process. In a little bit, we're going to go over the next side of how to document actual experience and task books as you're out, um, say, you know, some of your ICT-5 trainees, your, um, your firefighter type one, your single resource bosses, things like that. So in the training module, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and click add a class. And instead of going to class name, I'm going to skip right past that, go down here, and I'm going to say, okay, today we did the RT-130 class, refresher class, started right now, and we started this at 800 this morning. Add the class. Now you build up, because we've done that template, all of this stuff is pre-filled within the system. So everything was built by that training officer, by that coordinator, wildland coordinator, whoever's doing this, the instructor who's done it. So in this one, we're going to go ahead and skip down, go down to the instructors. If it's one of you as an instructor, you can find yourself. If they're from an outside agency, you would simply click type instructor name, type in their name and what agency they came from. And the notes on there, lead instructor, hit add, that instructor's in there, and we're good. Just give it a once over. We have some standards associated to it. See attached PDF for PowerPoints and everything else. All right, we're good on that. Now you see the narrative is already completed and then files. So if we want to download anything for the files, we can open up a PowerPoint if we had a PowerPoint listed to this class. Um, this is one big shout out to my crew who's uh, watching me today and uh, helping me out. Um, Sonny Brown, one of our firefighters here and uh, wildland coordinators, engine bosses. He has set this up and built our RT-130 this year and this is last year. So a lot of hard work went into that for him. So this guides our instructors on how to do all of that training. Go through to the next slide. Go to People tab. And now, as I have those people in the class, I download that PowerPoint. We go through it. All right, who's here? I'm just doing attendance. I hit Add Agency Personnel on there. And now I can go to my shift. So today, we're going to say it's A shifters that are on. We're going to sit there. We're, we're there with uh, Station 12. And we've got threes. And yeah, we'll say we've got uh, everybody there. Those are the folks that are in the class. All right, we're good. I'm the instructor. I do want to make sure that you guys understand that if you're on the list of instructors in order to get credit for this class to attend it yourself, and that's okay with your agency, then you're going to want to click on yourself as an attendee as well. Click add. 
it's going to load all of those people in there for you. Total hours of the class, this is built from that first page. Real refresher on there, it's saying six hours total. I can fill that. They've attended six hours. I go through. They've been done. That's all completed. Now, if you have somebody who say, um, we'll say that uh, Lieutenant from twos was only there and they missed the last portion of the class, I can come down here to the bottom and I can say, okay, he missed this portion of the class and give him zero hours for that or just clear it out and then miss that portion. We'll just say he missed the last hour on that and get that done. And that's good on there. So you see, oh, I'm sorry. He missed the last uh, 45 minutes, it looks like, on that class. That one's done on there. So that one's good. All my other class or all my other students have put in, put in correctly. You go to authorize. And now you see this little notification that just says there's a mismatch between the hours that I just changed for that one individual and something else. So I'm go in and put my password for uh, the system here. Now, if you're an administrator or you have full rights to the uh, training module yourself, you'll get the option to complete and review in one step. It's totally up to you guys. We're going to go ahead and do that so that it can work on the reporting side. Hit complete and review. Now, that one's on there. So that's how you run through a refresher training. That's how you get it done. So a really quick area on how to add that class and put them in. So those are all done. Now, as I check off, who has done the 130? So we're coming off. Our goal is to be done by the end of March, have everybody certified. So as the training officer, I can come in here, click on JPRs, and I can go over here, look at it, open it up. This is the 2018 red card. And the way uh, we're kind of going with this is when they finish those three classes that we talked about, their pack test, their pump operator class and refresher, and their RT-130 refresher, that is going to, we're going to tell the system to automatically initiate that task book, or I'm sorry, to automatically initiate that certification in the system. Then they can turn around and turn that certification into the wildland coordinator so that they can be issued their, their red card. So I can come down here, find some of the people you see right here, listed one out of three. They're incomplete. I can open him up, and it looks like he's completed the wildland refresher today, but hasn't gotten the other steps done. So I can go through, I'm just looking on the right side and I'm looking, okay, I've got a few people that are done. Oh, those guys I've already completed. These guys are three out of three. You see it says pending instead of incomplete. So I can click on this. Let's look at uh, Firefighter 2 on there. From C shift on one. All right, looks like they completed everything. They got everything done. And I can look over at the pack test just real quick. A quick note on here. This class was all done. The instructor got them through. Right here, you're gonna see self-taught, taught self. One of the things that I like to teach my folks is that they don't put it themselves in as a name or their officer in as the instructor for that, even if they may have been the evaluator or something along those lines, just because when I want to look at how much time they're teaching, spending as an instructor, it doesn't clutter up that time. Now, if they are the evaluator and they are guiding you through that process, then absolutely list them as the instructor for that class. Just remember, there has to be at least one lead instructor. You can't just have an evaluator. So if that's just your officer, for instance, and they're guiding you through everything, then you'd leave them as the lead instructor. So go through and look at it. I'm gonna skip right over here to the people tab real quick. So right here, you see in the grade portion, that number, that's the time that it took them to complete their task book or their uh, pack test. As you're going through and doing the pack test, we want to document at what time did you complete the, you know, complete this process. So it looks like this crew, C shift at ones, went out and did it all together. And this guy, um, the engineer finished at 4451, 4232. Now in the grade portion on here, it does say grade, and a lot of people like to say A, you know, traditional letter grades, A, B, C, D, things like that. Um, just understand that you can put anything. This is a free text field. You can put anything you want inside of there. So you can have them say, okay, you know, 4451 in this instance, that's their time when they completed. Now I have a documented record of that for all time. Um, you can see right here, I'm gonna call uh, call that a little fake. Looks like somebody was maybe running a little bit outside of standard, but hey, you know, that's where it is. Check with that officer, make sure that's right. Um, but that's all in there. So I just wanted to show you guys that unique little trick that we utilize in a lot of the departments. Um, that I've seen that users reporting are utilizing that in a grade function to say, this is the total time it took them. So any physical agility test 
that you're doing, whether it's live land related or not, you can use that same trick. Works really, really well. So that one's good. All right, awesome. I'm all good with that. So I'm just going to go back in. I'm going to see that they're all good. Scroll back down to my folks where I was. Done on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on this little lock over here. Open that up. I'm going to put in my password when I'm completed with it. So I'll just pre do it. I'm going to go ahead and put mine in there. Any notes that you wanted to put on here, say somebody didn't document uh, correctly on here, but you had an email, they had a problem with putting it in, you can always override that and say, you know, I've attached the email to this system. Um, they did a pack test at a different organization. I'm authorizing it this as the wildland coordinator, supervisor, whatever that is. And now you see no certification, manually upload a file, or automatically generate a file. I'm going to click automatically generate a file so that it can, the system will automatically send that out. So, a little note on there. And it's going to be my engine, Firefighter 2 on that. Complete JPR. Now it's all good. This comes up. What certification type is it? And we're going to say it's a wildland firefighting type. And then this is where you would fill the certification. Again, on certifications, you got to make sure you put one in there that says what that certification is going to be called. And I would name this one something like your wildland refresher, red card initiation, uh, something along those lines. And then expiration date. For most of us, that's going to be one year from the date that was done. So we'll say it was done there. We do 2019, and it's going to expire on March 1st, 2019, whenever that is. Any notes? Hit save, and now that one's good. Now, what did that just do, everything that I did? I can go back in to that individual, and if I am that individual and I'm logged in, I can go to my profile and search out my certification, print it off, hand it to the wildland coordinator for that. Um, if you're, as an administrator, you want to go in and check on everybody's stuff, I can go into administration module here, go into that personnel list, and I'm gonna find my, uh, Firefighter 2 on that shift, and go down here and say it was a C shift, 11C, Firefighter 2. Open that up. Go all the way over here to certification. And now you see I have that certification on there. I can look at it. If I edit, I can, you know, view history of there, everything else. So I'm just going to open this up. There's the certification of completion, awarded to that individual's name, completed, whatever you called this, if that's your red card initiation, your RT-130, refresher, whatever you want to call that, effective from the date they did it until it expires the next year. They put that in, who was the instructor, that type of thing that gives you that digital signature. And then your department's logo will appear right here. So that's really nice. They can take this that says they completed those uh, tasks, those things before they were initiated their red card. And now you have a history to look through exactly when they did everything that they did in the system. So this is how to document your initial or your, um, your course for your refresher. This also works really well if you're wanting to document initial certification for your S-130, 190 courses um, for those initial uh, firefighter type two. Uh, people, when they first get in, they do the class, they go through everything, they get their um, entry level course done, all that stuff is done. You can put that in, and the JPR function will work really, really well for that if it's broken into multiple classes, and they can do that as well. Um, so, anyway, that's how to run that through. I hope that makes sense. I think we're going to go ahead and pause, see if we have any questions from anybody. Um, anybody out there have any questions about how that's working or what's going on so far? Give it a couple seconds here. And I do have my team with me that's uh, here helping out. So they will go ahead and jump on. If you do have any questions while we're going, we'll try to stop. Um, my team will jump in and, and interrupt me if they need to. And also, they can type in their answer directly on the right side. So if you have questions, just click on it, document it on the right side there. So we'll go ahead and go on. I'm not seeing any, uh, any other questions right now. So let's try to monitor that. All right. So now I'm going to jump over and show you. So some of the ideas here, what I just showed you is a great uh, for using to teach 
um, or to got, show your training for initial certification if you have a set amount of classes. So um, what I'd like to bring up here, and this can get a little confusing, but I want to try to make sure to clarify some of this stuff. So what is a JPR within the system? And when is it used most effectively? Typically, that is going to be used after the completion of a set number of classes like we did right in that situation. Um, and then specific training codes during a specific class date, you know what those are. So examples of that, like we talked about, we have that 130, 190, um, documenting they need to get their 131 done, S290, um, you know, uh, 231 if they're going into their crew boss stuff. You got your power saws or your saws, I'm sorry, for 212, 211 for your pump, all those different things that they're doing. Um, those are classes, and that's what JPRs work really, really well for to say, hey, have they meet, met all the uh, requirements to maybe, say, initiate their task book so that they can send that stuff in and actually initiate a task book. You would build out those specific classes in templates and then do it just the way I showed you before. Um, so that's that initial certification of the firefighter type 2 we talked about or the RT-130 that we talked about there. So the difference in what I'm going to show you now is when you go out and you have that task book that's been initiated, how do you know who has accomplished what specific tasks within those task books? So for instance, in this situation, we're gonna say, we've got some engine boss trainees for this season that uh, they're up and comers, future leaders in our organization, and we wanna track how they're documenting that experience and getting that field experience. The difference with that is a lot of these tasks have to be done on a specific incident. So I'm going to come over here and in your handouts you should have on the right side you'll see a handout with all of these NWCG task books. It's not all inclusive. This is just the um, ICT5 and Firefighter 1 task book that's been put into an Excel format and then also your single resource boss and then including your crew boss, engine boss, heavy equipment operator, feller boss, things like that. Um, this is that entire list. So we put these into a format to where we can kind of explain this. So in this list, we have these O's, as everybody knows. This means I can do that in a classroom setting or on a wildland fire or on an incident or on a prescribed fire. So it's kind of open. For this purpose, we're going to say these are all done as a class in a classroom to get them caught up, getting ready. We just started, we initiated these fellas into their, uh, and ladies into their um, their task book, we've started that uh, engine boss task book and we're getting going with it. So they're going to need to complete, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. They're going to need to complete all of the white in the O's there. So that's all going to get put into a classroom. Now the other side of this is we have an incident. So on an incident, and you know, this is going to be up to your organization, which, how you classify this. Um, when they're on an incident, they need to get signed off that they perform these specific skills under their supervisor or someone certified at that level, and they're going to be able to tell them, hey, I watched them do this in an um, acting capacity or in a trainee capacity, and that, yes, I give them the blessing, they're good to go, they've done this, and I'm comfortable with it. That's when they're going to sign off that task on that task book in the paper task, task book that you're traditionally utilizing. So. All of those different things go down on there. Same thing on a wildland or prescribed burn, and then the green here you see is what's required on a wildland incident only. So the reason this doesn't typically work too well in the JPR function that I just showed you is because you don't know if it's gonna take them five assignments or if it's gonna take them an entire season to get signed off on this task book. So because of that, I cannot say there's a specific set number of classes that's going to result in certification of engine boss or um, initiation of that engine boss. So what this gives me the ability to do, and if I load these into my codes and my code categories in the system here, I can customize each training event to say, if I go on a wildland deployment, I'm going to put in every code that they did and what resources were utilized. Then I can keep track of where am I at. So if I have one of my firefighters come and uh, talk to me as the training officer and they say, you know, hey, I, I, you know, I, I'm hoping I think I'm pretty close to getting my task book done. You know, how many tasks do I have left? You know, they have their paper copy, say they got lost, they got lost or they're not quite sure where they're at. I can run a quick report to see how many of these tasks they're missing from the year. So that's the direction of where we're going with this.
So how do we do all that? I'm going to go back down into my training. Now, we all say, okay, this is an incident. I responded out to um, if you deployed for as a cooperator engine um, or say you ran a mutual aid call with somebody or just an incident, a wildland incident in your organization. That's going to be handled in the incident module. And I would keep that in the incident module is what I would recommend. Now, every, almost all of the wildland assignments that I've been on um, and most of them that I've been around, they're all a large training session. So they're done, you have multiple uh, trainees underneath those supervisor levels. So anytime you have one of those trainees on that assignment, we're gonna go ahead and utilize this training module to document who did what on every single one of those assignments. That means if you have a tablet and an internet connection, you can do it right there from the field. You get back to camp, you can get all that stuff documented and use this as basically a electronic filing cabinet to keep track of all those documents, including scanning and uploading the paper document for JPR or for, um, sorry, uploading that paper document for the task book. That way it's always in there. You know who the signatures are. So we talked about how we're going to go through and do this. Well, I'm going to initiate those few people down here and I'm going to build a class for that initiation of the wildland task force or for the initiation of that uh, engine, uh, that engine boss, crew boss setup. So right here, I've already built a class. This is the last one that they went through. So the instructor, old Tom Lewis, taught us how to do this. What resources were used? They used the engine on the 128 pump. They used, you know, um, or the pump on 128. They also used the engine on 128. And then everything that was done from those codes that we utilize, we're going to track those on there. And then also I'm going to give it some standards for some ISO credit because um, this would meet at some of that company level training. They're out there working on those. And especially if you're talking about exposure protection, things like that, 100% um, relevant. So I can go back over here to my files and I can look over here and see, okay, we initiated that task book. I uploaded the file once it was all done and it's gonna open up in your system. Now it's tracked in here and you can see, I assigned this, I got assigned this task book, the fire department, your phone number, all of this stuff is all tracked within the system. And you can do this from PDF if you do have that ability or you can handwrite it and scan it and it's totally up to you guys on how you wanna do that. So I'm gonna go through and now you can see this whole task book is in there, it's been initiated when it's been started. All right, and the person that attended the class and then authorized on there. So obviously in this situation, if I have these individuals that are on the class, I'm gonna have one file attached for every single one of those individuals. Authorize that and it's good to go. All right, so that starts the task book. Now I get uh, toned out and I'm gonna go on a wildland incident now. I get done, I've got my paper task book, they're signing off the specific tasks, they're doing everything. Um, you're being evaluated, you're an engine boss trainee, um, you're getting your stuff signed up for your single resource boss, you're also doing that, uh, that crew boss, engine boss in unison, getting all those tasks signed off, being evaluated. So I'm going to come back to camp or come back after the incident to my home unit, and I'm going to go ahead and document that as a training. I'm going to go into add class. To make it easier for everybody, for you training officers, I would recommend building a template for them. So this one right here, real simple, wildland incident experience. You see when I skip right down to there, it automatically fills the name. That way I'm not typing. If I type something in up top here and click there, it's going to overwrite the name on me. So I'm sure all of you that have been here before have seen that. So I can come down here and I can say I went on that incident and we're just gonna keep it simple and say today we did it. Um, it's gonna overlap the time, but that's fine. Say got tapped out of that call at 10 o'clock. Hit add class, it's gonna open up just the way we showed you before. So now the info is listed on here. Now you see, I'm gonna to have to load the instructor on this side. Um, I have subjective and manipulation or manipulative as the evaluation method on here. That one is you know, relevant to this type of training. And I'm gonna load in my instructor. So if you had multiple evaluators, you're gonna put all of those evaluators in here, but you gotta have at least one lead instructor. So in this instance, we're gonna say that uh, Oh, we're going to say that old Tom is our uh, trainer again on there. Let's do it. Tom Lewis, lead instructor on there, and he is the
he is the evaluator for the evaluation record. And those of you that use these NWCG test books know what I'm talking about. Evaluation record number one. So he was the engine boss assigned to my rig when I went out with him, and he's evaluating me. I'm a trainee under him right then and there as I'm out there. Bad. Okay. But also, you know, maybe they stole me and put me on another engine to go do something. Um, they got assigned to something, and I needed a few different tasks signed off. So I ended up jumping over and going on uh, Michael Bazzoni on Michael Bazzoni's apparatus on his engine. Maybe I was attached with an air ops or an air ops supervisor or something, and I need to talk to those aircraft. That's a big one. I'm going to do that, and we're just going to name him as part of the emergency reporting team, and he's an evaluator. And I'm going to say he's evaluator. Record number, I'm going to say two. Now, whether you type it as number, number sign, it's up to you guys on how you want to do that. So, number two. So now that's on there. We got evaluator, you know, evaluator, lead instructors. Those are all good. Any resources that were used, and this is a great place where you can start tracking what resources were used for that, and you know, for that um, that incident. So if you're doing this uh, a class day to day to day for every operational period, um, or just for the entire deployment for a long range incident, that's totally up to you guys on how you want to document that. And then I can also keep track of what resources on that apparatus or what resources that belong to your organization are being utilized. So we can say we used the saw on this one. Um, we took that engine, we're using the pump. And again, this list would become extremely long depending on how in depth you wanted to get with that. But this is a great place to track what resources were actually done on that, on that call. Objectives, tasks, well, I gotta make sure that I load all those tasks in. And remember, this is why we sent that list out to you guys. The way it's categorized right now, and you guys can change this in the code category, I've got these all listed as NWCG, and I know it's going to be the single resource. Hit enter, and now it's filtering everything else out that does not match NWCG and has single resource in there. So I know that I'm going to do all of those different tasks for single resource as well as the engine boss task. So now I'm seeing, I want to see engine resource, single resource. We've already done the O's. All right. On there, I'm going to scroll through and say, all right, what have we done on this list? So he's done the I on there. He did this one, this one. And again, if you're going off your paper document, you're just going to follow what's listed. He did all of these incidents. Just to save you guys time, you can always look through all of these. From that list. And we can just go through. All right. Got a couple of those prescribed, set up, and done since it was a wildland incident. Make sure we get those documented and get done. So we got all of that stuff done. Um, we talked about those subjective things. Go resource boss. Yeah, there we go. Interview, critical stress management, if anybody needed it. All right, we're all good. I got everything loaded that they did. I click add. It's going to be a pretty long list. I've got everything listed in there. Now you're going to see over here that it has a time component for every single one of these on here. You don't have to put any time in there. We can still run a code search, but if you wanted to be super specific, you would want to, you can put in exactly how much time they spent on each one of those tasks. Totally up to you guys on that. But you see in this, the way the template was built, those hours for NFPA 1051, just the way that a generic way does a placeholder, those hours are calculated from this box. So I can calculate those hours. Depending on your settings, and again, we'd have to refer back to some of the um, earlier trainings when it comes to how this system is working on the incident mod or the training module for emergency reporting, these hours, I'm sorry, right here, class length is calculated based on codes. You can set the system up to where you just give it a class length and the hours are not associated to that. So it's totally up to you and depends on how your system is set up. But if your system is set up this way, 
you, I just want to make a disclaimer, you do not have to put any hours in there, it'll still function. Standards, again, you're going to give them some company level training on that because, again, it's relevant. And the location. This is where I'm going to put where that location happened. So um, in this instance, just going off one of the last assignments I was on at the Hayden Pass fire here in Colorado, near Salida, the address where that staging location was, um, you can just simply hit change on there or add one. If you don't have an existing, which chances are you wouldn't, you would enter the name and the description. And I just put the name of the location there and then the description was the actual address of that type of thing. I like to put in the name of the incident, also the latitude and longitude. Hit save and it'll load it in there. Objectives are up to you guys what you wanna put on that list. You don't have to put anything on there. Narrative, this is where if you have any um, journals or anything, if you're utilizing the system, you have a tablet there in the field, you wanna upload stuff into the training, keep track of that uh, individual that has that task book open, you can cut, put any uh, notes that you want to put in there. Just the notes itself that they're going to be able to read anybody with access to this class or full rights to the training module will be able to see anything that you write. So just make sure that you understand that before you put uh, any incriminating information over there. All right. The next one, we have our files. So now I'm going to add some files to this. So I'm going to go into the file. I'm going to upload right here and I'm going to say, okay, I want to take that task book and actually put it into the system. So right here, you can see, I'm just gonna find it, there it is. There's my task book, hit open and save. Now, if you're on, if you're doing this in the field or if you're doing this from a tablet, say you have um, an iPad, I'm just gonna use that as an example. I'm gonna use an iPad in, when I get back to my home unit or at some point I'm sitting down, I wanna document my training. When I click upload into this, I'm just gonna do it again real quick add file on here, I click upload. I'm gonna get an option to take a photo right then and there, and I could take a photo of something. Also, if you utilize, one that I like to utilize on the iPad works really, really well, is the Adobe Acrobat app. It'll give me the option to take multiple pictures of that task book right then and there, and scan all of those things in and save them to my device. Once I scan all of those signed tasks in on the paper task book, because um, we're still doing it on those. We've got the paper out there with the guys. You know, they're having it signed off by the uh, evaluator. Now I can go in and say, okay, this is all done. The nice thing also with Adobe with that app is you can actually do it in the field digitally if you wanted to. Um, not saying you have to do that. There's definitely still a place for paper, especially on these incidents. So you come back, you get that piece of paper or that task book, you scan it all into the system by taking the photos is the easiest way that I've found. And now we can actually go in, load that. It's just gonna cancel out because I already loaded it. And now I have a document of that exact task book in working order as I'm going through. So I can see not only did I document all of the codes, all the tasks that they did, but I also have the paper record. So if something happens to that paper record from that individual, I can go back and see it. So if I ever have any questions, again, this is utilizing the system as more of that digital um, filing cabinet, you know, the cloud-based filing cabinet to keep track of everything. And now this is all loaded, give it a name and then who it's, who it's visible to. So if you don't want everybody to see everybody else's task book, you can just say only users with limited or full. So your instructors is the limited folks and then your training officers or whoever has full access, or you can just say just the training division, whoever has full access to that um, setting, that system. All right, so that one's all loaded. I changed the names to suit what it's done, working copy, and now I go through and load this. So in this instance, I'm the person that's working on this task book. I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna type in my name, quick search to find myself, hit enter, that's me, all right. Click add. Again, this is a demo account. I'm not the fire chief. That's more for my guys. Um, don't want to start any rumors or anything. <laughs> um, so I can start my hours again. I want to give myself 10 hours of credit. Um, one of the other intent or one of the other things on this is I'm out there on an incident, and as I'm doing stuff as an incident um, on the incident, but as a trainee, I can get myself credit for training hours. Again, depending on how your officer wants or how your department runs everything. Um, just wanting to give you guys an idea out there so I can get some training credit while I'm out there learning on the job, getting that OJT, that on-the-job training. 
So putting that through, that's not my rate for anybody that's wondering. So <laughs> get that done, hit authorize. I wish that was my rate, but that's not my rate. Anyway, um, put in my password. And again, any notes that you want to do on this. And again, if you are a training officer and you have full rights to the training module, you can hit the class is complete and reviewed. Click complete class. And now that's going to be documented inside of there. So all of those things are done, everything we talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and pause for a minute here and see if we have any other questions from anybody here with us. Not seeing anything yet, um, just making sure I've got everybody. Hey, Mark, are you still with us? Yes, sir. All right. Just want to make sure that I didn't uh, lose everybody and I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> nope, we're good. Hey, I want to just, if, while you took a break here, wait for somebody to put a question in. For Chris, I want to give a shout out to Sherry and Bill from our dev team who are online with us for the training today. And also Tommy and Alan with our training team that's on with us today. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right. So as we're going through this training, um, I haven't seen any questions pop up. So either uh, I've put everybody to sleep or um, I'm just doing a really good job. I'm going to go with the, uh, the earlier version of that, that I put everybody to sleep. So hopefully y'all wake up and we can get you going. So again, I want to recap on the difference between what we just did and using utilizing the JPR component of emergency reporting. Um, in my opinion, this is a very difficult thing when you talk about a task book to track within the JPR settings it, the way that emergency reporting works and sits today because I don't know what, what uh, tasks they're going to complete and what experience they're going to get when they're on that assignment. So if, you know, if, for instance, you may be on a wildland fire where you don't have any aerial support, so therefore, you're not able to sign off on talking to those aircraft or any of those aerial support tasks. So, you know, you don't know when that's going to happen. You know, we can't predict how that's going to go. And due to the uh, the way that the NWC got CG guidelines and the PMS 311s and how all that's written within the rules, it's got to be done, as we showed you in that list, the way that it's documented. It's got to be done either on a wildland incident, on a prescribed fire, um, those types of things. So therefore, that's where we just kind of go with every incident I like to document as a training because it is. It's on the job training, on the job experience that you're documenting, and you're really giving people total credit. One of the other things I'd like to add, and this is totally up to everybody on how they want to do this. So if I want to go through and give them a class, I can just click back over and go to um, a different course. Sorry, I'm going to do the one we just did on there. All right, so as we're going through, I'm going to unlock this one so we can mess with it. So Mark is incomplete on there. All right. I'm going to go back to my files tab. A couple of ideas, some things that I like to put into the in, into this, because we called this kind of our digital um, filing cabinet, right? So I can go in here to my files and I'm going to upload a few more files. I'm going to upload, go over here and I'm going to say, I'm going to throw my 225 evaluation record on there as well. That way, if there's any, ever any questions, I'm also tracking this. Well, this is what my supervisor told us about the engine. So this is what my task force leader, whoever that was, this is what they actually did on the incident. And all of that stuff now is tracked within the training on there. Another thing I also like to do is if you are utilizing a national system, and this was um, a federal fire or something like that, you have the NCWeb website. You could also load the URL for NCWeb and put that incident information directly on there. Beyond that, another thing, and it, this is again up to your department's policies and what you're allowed to do, you could take and print off that incident and scan it, either print to PDF, scan the incident uh, report into here, and load that directly into the system. Again, we have a lot of things that we can put on here. Um, a lot of the um, incidents that I've been to last year, they have the maps posted up there with the QR codes, with the Avenza maps, those different things. You have your 
your IAPs, you can load all of that stuff directly into the system here as training um, what it, you know, what IAP was done, all of those different things. And that really helps keep this, if you don't want to keep all that information in the incident module, um, because it is a mutual aid fire or something like that, and that's not technically following along the lines of the ENFERS um, program, I can use this uh, training to store all of that information about that engine crew. So the idea here, or the ideology here, is treating every one of those wildland incidents as long as you have a trainee with you as an on the job training and as an experience. Again, training is also, we're wanting to document some of that experience within the training module. So I can document everything that's going on. Also, any of the existing um, engine bosses, you wanna document how often you're doing things. Say your crew goes out and they want to document um, how much time they're spending on saws. Have I cut down a, a you know, a bee tree in a while? Have I cut down, you know, if I'm an A faller, have I done any, any, you know, any A trees, B, C, whatever that is, you know, have I worked with heavy equipment? Maybe, you know, you're out on an assignment, they pull you off and assign you as a heavy equipment uh, boss and you're running a dozer line. You can document all of that in training and also not only for the initiation of that task book, but you can document all the stuff the way I showed you before with those, um, those codes as experience on doing that. So you can say, I did this, this, this. So if I wanted to go in here and add that heavy equipment, so I can come through and say, okay, we did this, capabilities and limitation of equipment. Yep, 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 yep. All of these for the heavy equipment boss. If I scroll down, you see they're all heavy equipment. Okay, I did everything, gave it the once over. You can also check the box over here. That's gonna check every single one of those. Sorry about that. Hit add. And now this is gonna include all of those on the system. Um, so this, obviously, we would go through and start a new class and put that in. Now, I'm tracking all of the experience on that heavy equipment, you know, to say that it's on there. And that's done the exact same way and then I just go ahead and authorize that class. I had to remember which uh, login I was utilizing. Complete class on it. All right, so now that's good, that's done. Now, I hope that makes sense to tracking experience as well as tracking new task books. Um, if anybody else is out there, I know for, uh, for Tommy, um, the world's uh, going, <laughs> The world's changing a little bit. Uh, Tommy's one of our trainers in uh, Pender County, North Carolina, and Tommy may not fight as many wildland uh, fires as we do, but I bet you Tommy has something where there's tasks and things like that. Um, say it's a USAR team, um, say it's a, a FEMA team that goes out and you have specific tasks that have to be done or tracked. You can able, oh, Tommy just said he's under a red flag warning today. Um, that's, a, that's a rough day, Tommy. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Um, so if you're doing those things, you can utilize those, uh, you can utilize this same, men, this same, uh, ideology to track all of that experience in that time. Um, because we are working with, uh, federal agencies and things like that. And, uh, maybe not what, you know, a lot of our, um, structural fire departments are doing every day, but we can document the training and knowing that our folks, you know, work with those people and, and have those tasks completed. And if, you know, God forbid something happens and we get, uh, um, we have an injury or, or a fatality. Um, we can come back and I can look at all of their records, all of their experience and everything else. Um, if your department's like mine, chances are that task book kind of lives with that person. You know, they kind of guard that under lock and key and um, keep it in a safe somewhere and, and always guard that, that uh, paper task book with their life. Well, you know, obviously if they're injured and in the hospital, and we got to look at their training. Um, we got a NIOSH report or something that's coming down. You know, it's going to be hard to get that document from them. So this is a great way to keep it electronic and really access that stuff quickly. Um, so anyway, that's just my little uh, soapbox on that. Um, as we're going through, if I'm not seeing any other questions, um, and Tommy hey, says, you know, they use this. Go ahead. I was just going to mention what Tommy put up there. You were just jumping into it as well. Go ahead. Uh, Tommy's saying that um, he uses, utilizes this a lot 
in the all hazard incident management team. And yes, Tommy, that's a great point. Um, a lot of areas, no matter where you are, you're utilizing these types of things, especially, um, Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong or anybody else, but I would imagine a lot of your ICT1, ICT2, so your incident, incident command type one, incident type two, type three, depending on the complexity and the size of that incident, um, are utilizing a lot of those same trainings and a lot of those same things. So we are working on uh, um, developing and making this list that I sent to you guys, making that a little bit uh, larger. And um, yes, Tommy did agree that type one, type two, type three. And we are gonna go ahead and work on trying to get those lists put out there to where we have a, uh, um, a list of the NWCG guidelines for type one, type two, type three. So that's, that's a great point on that. Thank you, Tommy. Should have just uh, jumped, put you on as a, <laughs> as an organizer and a panelist on this training. You could have helped us out a lot. Um, anyway, all right, so moving on on this, since I'm not seeing any other questions on there, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and go into everything you just did. So the nice thing about doing this, uh, you know, you could keep it on paper, you could document it that way, and that's fine if that's how you choose to do it. Um, but now I can actually utilize this to really do some powerful reports on what I've done. And one of the reports that I like to do is say, go down here to train codes not completed personnel for code for date range. I know that's a mouthful. We'll just call that 1626. Um, and a lot of us trainers, a lot of uh, our um, support team, you know, they'll come out and they'll say, okay, report 1626 is a, is a good one for this. So I'm going to run that report and I'm going to say, Give it a time frame. So this year, how are my folks doing? Um, I'm gonna say, how are my folks doing for my personnel on there? I've got to pick multiple side on that and training codes. So let's see. With the pick multiples on here, well, who are my engine boss trainees? This one I haven't listed on there yet. So I go to pick multiple on there. You're only going to have to do this the first time when you're setting this up. So I can say show all, and I want to pull everything from the stations. I want to do whatever I'm going to do on here. Let's just do ones, engine boss. Um, sorry, we're going to say, and I'm just putting some random people in there. You're going to put whoever by hitting the plus button that's moving them over. So I'm going to go over here, hit show all, C shift on there. And I know I had 12 done, one's done. All right, now as I'm doing this, so I'm gonna say, you know, he was on there, and then he was on there. And I go ahead and jump over, put myself on, just to get a variation of a lot of people. So right here, all of these folks in 2018 have open engine boss task books or your ICT3, um, your, you know, your ICT1, whatever that is, they've got that task book open. So I'm gonna call these guys my, um, my Engine Boss Trainees 2018. If you wanted to do it that way, you could, so you can always run that. So these are the task books that were opened in 2018. I know all these folks have started it. I click OK. Now, personnel are on there. That's a list, and I can do that for multiples. I have that grouping that's always there by naming it the 2018. And I wanna see what tasks were done within that side. So again, using my pick multiple side of things, I can say NWCG resource, we're gonna say right here. I'm gonna say all of the incidents. The reason I have all of these broken down is so you can go through these a lot easier the way that I've shown you. So we've got our single resource boss incident experience. I'm gonna add all of those. I'm also gonna go down here and say, yep, I wanna make sure that I add all of those. And now prescribed fires, add those. Only wildfires, add those. And again, I'm going through making sure resource boss incident, da -da 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 -da. looks like we're good. We're not going to worry about the classroom because the way I did it is I set it up differently. So I don't have to add those. That's why these are separated out. But if you did, you surely could see where they are on that. I'll go ahead and put them on just in case. All of those are there. And now this selection is
their test book. Open, hit OK on that. So now in 2018, what have they done? Create report. This is going to give me a list of everything that they're missing by that entire group. One all-inclusive list that's saying every single one of those codes that were not checked on that box. So I can come through and say, you know, right now, go back to our uh, firefighter two on there that we were doing. That's my list. All right. Now, if I wanted to run just a real quick one, so this is a list of everybody, and I'm just going to make this a little easier. We're going to keep it the same one on the task book, and I'm going to go down here to just my personnel on here, and I'm going to go find myself, for instance, on this report. How am I doing in my task book? So right there, I'm running the code for range, and I've got all of those done, so I'm good to go because I'm not missing any of those training codes. I've already completed all of those training codes, so mine's good to go. So I could also run a report to see where I'm at and see how many codes that were completed and when they were done by tracking back to the training, multiple different ways to do that. So we're coming up on the top of the hour. I just wanted to show you guys exactly how that works. And again, this report for everybody, um, just so that you guys know, is, I'm gonna say it right here, give it to you. That's for a group of folks. And I'm going to say this report number, 1626 right there. And again, we can send this out to folks, um, anybody that wants this. And like I said, this list is saying, what do I have left to do? What has not been checked off in the incident? So it's a real quick thing to see, okay, where is, if they come to me, my chief comes to me and says, you know, where is Firefighter Brown uh, on his ICT4 uh, task book? Well, he's got... X number of tasks to complete on there. Okay, cool. And I can give him an update. Hey, where am I at? You got to do these tasks and you can put those up and see what they are on those. So just a quick idea on how to run that. So looks like we're right at the top of the hour. I will obviously stay online here with everybody as long as you would like to, uh, to stay online um, and uh, answer any questions. So while we're waiting for questions to pour in or anything else, uh, do want to give a shout out to the team. Um, Tommy, Alan, Michael, thank you for being my wingman today. Uh, Mark Wolf, thank you for coming in and uh, helping out and uh, bringing up Tommy's stuff. Um, big shout out again to Tommy for helping us understand what the other side of the country is doing um, and knowing that you guys are all on a red flag day. Um, things aren't quite as different out there as I, as I once thought, I guess. So. This and keep waiting along. Looks like we got a question over there or a hand up. Hey, Chris, Mark here again. I want to just remind everybody um, or let you know that I did send an email to everybody that was registered for the training today with those attachments that Chris was showing us before on them. We can only put one of them in our handout section. The other one's a CSV file type, and you cannot put that in there. So I did go ahead and email them to everybody that was registered. Awesome. Great point. And just to add on to that, the CSV file type is, is really utilized for uploading of codes and things like that. And if it is something that you guys are interested in trying to upload, um, save some data uh, entry time, you can always contact support um, and, and see about, uh, about doing that. Um, getting that loaded into your codes. Um, I would definitely recommend going through that uh, that Excel spreadsheet or the uh, the CSV file that uh, that Mark sent to you all, um, and just cleaning it up and make sure that it's uh, that it's dialed and that it's exactly the way you want it worded with your department's terminology, um, and then you know saving that as a CSV file before we move forward with any of that. So something that's out there. Um, I'm probably uh, <laughs> Might have opened a can of worms. I don't know. As far as uh, I don't want to add too much to the depart or to the load workload for our customer support team, but they're always there to help. So that's one thing a lot of our customers don't know, Chris, is that we can um, import into your system training codes. So uh, you, right. you do have the file. You can customize what Chris has sent you, 
and ask us to import that for you, you can contact support for that, or you can actually send the email to uh, myself. My uh, name is Mark Wolf. It's mark.wolf, W-O-L-F, at emergencyreporting.com, and uh, we can get that taken care of for you. Excellent point. Thank you, Mark. All right. I'm not seeing any uh, any questions coming through. Are you seeing any questions coming through, Mark? Uh, no, we're good. And I'm uh, jumping on here, Chris, because uh, Mike sent me a, a message a few minutes ago. He had to go out on a call. So I, I uh, stepped in for him to be your wingman there. And I'm not seeing anything except for um, Len said a very good presentation. Thanks um, from Chris to Len and uh, Brian up in North Dakota. I've been conversing with Brian the last couple of days, a couple of times. And he says uh, he doesn't have any questions. And he's still awake. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and then Len uh, just put a comment here about, yes, I was going to answer his question about the uh, data that was emailed out. We need that file back the one that's the dot csv extension at the end of it then we can import that directly into your account absolutely if you guys have any questions um you know we'll definitely we're there to help out uh trainers you can always send an email to training at emergency and uh that'll send out to all of our trainers also support always out there to help you guys um we can load that stuff into the system um thank you alan i appreciate it and uh I guess we'll see you on the next one. Um, again, we will be working on this list and getting that to customer support to be a little bit more inclusive on um, some of that ICT one, two, three, and some of the other task books that are coming. You just gotta gotta see what we can do and work with our resources. So, um, oh, we got Andrew just asked a question. I'm sorry. Can this be exported to IQS, Andrew? Um, we would have to run a report and see how that works. I haven't tried it yet, but um, if we can start working some of the IQS stuff in to this um, and, and do some of that export, um, it would most likely end up being an export out of emergency reporting and then taking into our your system and then putting it into IQS. Um, as we start to figure out if that's possible or a way to do that, we'll do a training. Right now, I just don't know. I'd have to look at the IQS system and see what's exportable. So that is something that we'll have to work on and try to do. But I am familiar with what you're asking for. All right. 